Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. I am joined today by a very cool guy who I met at the New York Civ 6 event named Filthy Robot, also known as James. How's it going, James? Not doing too bad, man. Uh, looking forward to this. Yeah, a lot of people have, actually. We've had a lot of people in my comment section at least saying, hey, I saw that you saw uh, Filthy Robot in New York. When are you going to play? And uh, we finally decided to get together in uh, in a Civ 6 collab. So. Yeah, we, uh, I think I've done one collaboration before, did one with Marmazir, but this will be an interesting experience. We get to check out the new Civ 6 content together, and uh, we can uh, both bemoan the, the lack of multiplayer yet, and then uh, maybe one day <laughs> get involved with that. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, I think that the, the multiplayer event is going to definitely happen for us when the actual game comes out, which if you're unfamiliar, Civ 6 is coming out, I think, what, October 21st? That's my understanding. Yeah, so it's coming out in just a couple weeks here, two, three weeks. And uh, we right now we both have access to a preview build, which only unlocks some of the nations and some of the difficulty settings. Um, but you've also put a lot more time into the game than I have. How many hours do you have so far? I think I'm pushing 100 right about now, maybe like 85 to 100, somewhere in there. Right. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to collab with you was uh, you're the expert when it comes to Civ. Um, clearly, with 100 hours in on a trial game. <laughs> yeah, we're, getting, we're getting some sense of it at this stage. <laughs> Um, yeah, I do so, want to point out to the viewers uh, that we let's really highlight this because I've been getting uh, a lot of comments about this both in my live streams and on the YouTube stuff. Um, we we are limited to prints. We cannot choose a different difficulty. No matter how much we'd like to go play Deity right now, we can't do it. So uh, some of the AI interactions, you're going to be probably screaming us as the viewers, just go kill them. Well, if we did that every time that we had the option to on a Prince difficulty level, the game would just be us stomping the AI with archers. So we're, we're going to... We might do some combat this game, but I just want to be clear ahead of time that uh, there are very strong limitations on the AI's ability in this game. So we don't want to we don't want to read too much into that. And we don't want to be forced into a position where we're just exploiting that to win the game. Right. Even I can beat like all of the AI with three or four archers. So, and and this is coming from Filthy Robot here, who can you you literally beat like what six deity AI all by yourself in yes. Civ Five? Yeah, I have done one so, of those games. That was that was quite interesting. But yes. And that's not just like one was, it wasn't a free for all, it was one versus a team of six deity AI. Five, but it was six of us total. Six, so it was six players in the game, uh, me versus five deity. Oh, yeah, yeah, just five. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I, and by the way, people are probably going to be wondering are you guys going to play Civ 5? We do have a plan. Uh, uh, he's going to teach me how to beat a deity AI because I haven't done that yet. And you can apparently beat five, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're looking forward to that too. My my long term goal with that is to slowly pull you over to the multiplayer side of Civ Five. So we'll we'll mm -hmm. start we'll start easy. We'll start with the AI, and then we'll uh, maybe move on to players if uh, if if it holds the interest. So. Yep, and that's part of the problem with Civ Six though as well. Is there's no multiplayer options. So we're doing some interesting little shenanigans here just to make this recording happen. But uh, hopefully we'll have a good a good series for you guys. Right. So we uh you, you've played almost every nation, right? You said there was only two you hadn't played yet. One was Teddy Roosevelt. The other was uh, Scythia. Yeah. And so I, I've been deliberately avoiding this because uh, all the bonuses for Scythia seems to be based on uh, military units. So uh, I've been avoiding playing that because although I think it will be a super, super strong Civ when it comes to playing against higher level difficulties, I'm trying very hard not to make every game just exploiting the AI's inabilities at Prince level. So that's mm -hmm. why I've held off them. And I just haven't got around to Teddy. Teddy actually has some bonuses that I'm kind of interested to play around with. And this seemed to be one that you wanted to try too. So I think this is a pretty good one to, uh, to start with. Yeah, I like the idea of the uh, the legacy bonuses being cut in half and uh, trying to change government a lot and you know just build up lots of legacy bonuses. That's a really seems... cool idea. I haven't even thought about messing with the legacy bonuses. I've I've been see I've seen them, but I just almost pay no attention to them. So it would be kind of cool to actually try to min max that element. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. We well, I think in? we're good to go. If you want to, yeah. All right. I guess the only other thing to talk about is we're playing on continents or we're playing on large. So there'll be t uh, I believe it's twelve on large, right? and 10, 10 AI, I think, on large, and continents means there will be at least two large man land masses. I've had some bad luck with continents. I've seen some of it spawn just on little individual islands, even though it's continent, but some of the games have been quite good with that, too, so we'll uh, at, least, uh, at least take a look. Sounds good. Right. Welcome, Sean, Sean Bean. Yeah. I it's suppose. the stage. <laughs> We're actually hearing audio from that. Ooh. Perhaps it's because you had muted the music. Is it considered music? Did I turn it all down? We'll check when we get in game. All right. Well, we don't need to hear Sean Bean, I guess, for this quite yet. He'll be he'll be showing up for the rest of the stuff. We can talk yeah, about the bonuses too. He's pretty repetitive. Uh, you know, the whole from the first stirrings of life beneath water. You know, he's yeah. I've almost got that memorized now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Not, yeah, not it's, deliberately. Uh, it's it's it, the one line that always sticks out to me is the "You have come far." <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I was surprised to hear that Sean B did uh, a lot of the narrations in in Civ Six, which is really cool. 
Yeah, I like it. I like it as a whole. I like it as a whole. But uh, the, the stuff, the problem is, as soon as you start spending any l uh, large length of time with any game, yeah, anything that is repetitive is going to stand out to you because you see it so many times. Uh, do you want to talk through the bonuses? You want me to talk through the bonuses on these? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. You go ahead. So uh, we're looking at a couple. I mean, each of the sibs have a number of bonuses. I think that's. I think it's one building, one uh, one unit, or something like that. But I'm not entirely sure about that. For, but Teddy, in particular, he has a combat bonus on his home combat on his home continent. Um, an additional plus one appeal to all tiles inside a national park, which we'll talk about later. That's a tourism thing. Um, he gets the unique unit, which is a Rough Rider, uh, which is available when they research rifling. Uh, rough Riders are bonus in hills and give, I believe it's culture, but it might be some other yield when they get kills. Um, other than that, they get legacy. They get additional legacy bonuses or faster legacy bonuses from governments, and this is when you change government in Civ, uh, Civ Six. You retain some of the bonuses from the old government, so he gets more of these when he changes uh, these bonuses. He gets a unique air unit, which I've forgotten what it does already. I believe it's a fighter, uh, but that's about all I remember about it. And then he gets a unique uh, tourism-oriented bonus uh, in the film studio in the modern era. So two bonuses, roughly, uh, between the national parks and the film studio. Uh, film studio, excuse me, for tourism, and uh, a couple unique units, and then some combat strain stuff. So a kind of a mix of tourism and combat is what I'm seeing mostly from this Civ. Mm -hmm. I, I like just the, the... It's amazing how big of a difference having plus five combat strength makes in the first few turns, because uh, Civ Six is just so different when it comes to barbarians, right? They're, they they will murder you in your sleep if you don't take care of them. They're like, very aggressive. Very aggressive. They're very prolific. I mean, just all over the place. Last um, night I was playing, and I had like six or seven within the first ten turns. Yeah, anyway. yeah, and it depends on depending on the camps. You can get you can get two or three camps spawning into, and if you get and the the other thing about the barbs in Civ Six is real early game. You get horsemen and horse archers almost instantly. Like that can be mm -hmm. the first barb. You see the scouts show up, and two minutes later there's a horseman out there, and a horseman will easily crush your slingers in the early game. So it's it, it can be a little scary. So uh, I'm playing right now. I've been playing with show yield icons on, uh, especially as I learned the game. It's really nice to see the, the the different changes as various text hit, for example, and everything else. I really like our, our land, by the way. Have you uh, had a chance to look at this quite yet? Yeah. Uh, well, we spent uh, probably felt like an hour or so last night talking about um, settling and, and how you decide where you settle. And I actually really am looking forward to picking your brain when it comes to um, how Civ Five first off translates into Civ Six. If there's a difference between settling and then just just in general in civilization, how do you go about determining where to settle? Yep. All right. Uh, enjoy. Sorry, I was messing with the setting there. I was like a little distracted. This, <laughs> but uh, let's let's think about this. So we can we do we take this a couple ways. We can we can talk as a whole about our settling on this location, which is definitely worth discussing. I mean, that's, that's something always worth discussing when you settle stuff. And we can talk about settling in general. So Civ 5 pattern in general, you wanted river if possible, you wanted hill if possible, because uh, when you, just like in Civ 6, when you settle uh, a un when you settle your settler, you're always granted two food, one hammer. No matter what terrain you settle on, you're always going to get that as a minimum yield. That's kind of what the city center gives as a yield in both Civ 5 and Civ 6 is two food and one hammer. Um, okay. And both these games also hold a slightly similar pa similar pattern in that if you settle on something that gives more food or more hammers than the two food, one hammer that you're settling on, you get that in addition to the city center stuff. So now there's a couple caveats with that. The first is it removes any sort of removable terrain when you settle a city. So if you settle on forest, it removes the forest. If you settle on jungle, it removes the jungle. I don't, are we calling this jungle or rainforest? Do we know, by the way? It's both in well, the Wikipedia. So rainforest. <laughs> calling it rainforest? Okay. We'll, I think so. I mean, pretty much all... All, I think all of the uh, the adjacency bonuses refer to it as rainforest. So all right, well, we'll uh, I'll try to I will slip up multiple times this video, but you'll have to keep keep correcting me. But we'll try to remember this is rainforest. Um, so rainforest and forest are both removable terrain bonuses, so they will get knocked off if you settle on it. So you don't get additional yield on that. Um, however, let's say we settled on this cattle. The cattle doesn't get removed. If we settled on this cattle, the yield from our city would be three food, one hammer, uh, because it would take the initial yield you get from the city and add the bonus uh, bonus one food on that. So okay. There is, when you're thinking about settling cities, it's totally legitimate to settle on uh, uh, bonus resources for the extra yields if you're going to get extra yields. And you get, and I, I believe I've tested this in Civ 6, it definitely works in Civ 5, and I'm like 75, 80% sure it works in Civ 6 as well. If you settle on a luxury and you have the tech for the luxury, you get the amenities that that luxury provides. So you will get happiness right. from settling on luxury. So that's totally reasonable to settle on luxuries as well. Um, I remember that from Civ 5, like you would settle on um, strategic goods as well because you would get them as soon as you unlock the tech. 
Yep. Um, but you said you were liking our start. So what is it about the start that you like? Grassland hills are so good in this game right now. So uh, previously in Civilization V, all hills were just hammer yields and the uh, with no food on it. So the problem you'd run into is to work high production, which is very, very valuable across the course of the game. You would be unable to grow your cities while simultaneously working high production. You have to do a mix of food and production in both Civ V and Civ VI to get any use out of this. Um, grassland hills are kind of breaking that rule. Grassland hills are all the way through the game, a good mix of food and production. Uh, they have mm -hmm. enough food to support the population that's working them while simultaneously giving maximum production. So why do I like this land? I don't particularly like the spot we're going to settle on. We get no bonus from settling on a grassland hill. It's still going to give us two food, one hammer when we settle, and it will give us two food, hit one hammer for the rest of the game. But all the tiles around us are grassland hills, and they're wooded grassland hills. What this means yeah. is we can at some point chop the woods for bonus uh, production and then still have a really good tile underneath the woods to improve for the late game for working them. So we're going to have good growth, good food, and excuse me, good growth and good production in this city uh, without having to move anywhere. So our capital is going to be monstrous, which is great. So would you consider then maybe settling on the milk, the cows? Um, could do. Uh, we should. I would. I would definitely poke around here. I almost don't want to settle west because if we look at the the stuff to the west, we get all this flat land. And if we settle in place, we get access to, I can see the deer down here, which we'd lose if we move to the cattle. We have mm -hmm. immediate good tiles. We have two two tiles to start working right off the bat. And not too distant, we have a three one tile, which is pretty damn good too, and a two three tile, which is quite good. So I, I, I'd probably be pretty tempted to settle in place. We're on our river, so we get the, um, so if you're not familiar with this yet, every time you have yep. a settler, uh, we'll, tell the, we'll tell chat then, right? Uh, every time mm -hmm. you have a settler, uh, <laughs> Not for your first settler, weirdly. You normally get what you get the settler overlay when yeah. you pick up a settler. Shortcut and key four, by the way. Is it four? Yeah, one, two, three, four. No, go no, down the list. Didn't know yeah. that. I, I'm a shortcut. And, uh, I'm, a, I'm a nut when it comes to shortcut keys. So I like them too. <laughs> I just didn't know there were any for the lenses. Um, I noticed the shortcuts are also missing. We're missing some in the game still. So I'm, I'm looking forward to when they get added. Uh, some of the combat mm -hmm. ones in particular. But yes, so the dark green here on this map uh, is fresh water. And fresh water is a huge boost in housing, just plus three housing just to settle on fresh water. So definitely worth doing if we can do that. Right. right. So we are uh, already the, the slowest Civ 6 players in existence. So uh, I'm sure people want us to go ahead and just settle, right? <laughs> we, no, uh... no, I disagree. I, dis I refuse to accept that because well, I don't, maybe we're <laughs> the slowest Civ 6 players. But I don't think just settling is the way to go, especially your capital. The capital settle is the most important settle in the game. It's going to dictate the shape of your early game based on the resources you have available uh, in the, the and the very early tiles in your capital. Settlement capital placement is super critical. And it's a little bit frustrating in Civ 6 because of how much slower the movement system is, how much harder it is to get around on rough terrain. You don't have as many mm -hmm. options available in moving your settler. It just takes longer to get to the same locations that you could get to in Civ 5 relative uh, in Civ 6 relative to Civ 5. Right. So I mean that that, that actually brings up an interesting topic from in my mind at least is how many turns would you be willing to go? to settle in a better location and how significant is that we're playing on quick speed i think it is so yep. like like let's say you took three turns how, how far behind will you be yeah uh, i mean i can again i, I will reference Civ five but because I, I don't know yet in Civ six because uh, the, the benchmarks are you know how far behind are you relative to the other players and in this case we have prince ai as our benchmark so it doesn't really give us a strong sense of anything um but in Civ Five, I would be very hesitant to move more than a, two turns. I'm starting to not like it. Three turns, I'm starting to go. We need to settle immediately. If you're if you're doing like a five 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 uh, turn walk, you're going to be very disadvantaged early game. Um, mm -hmm. So here, it's slower to move around. The game, I must say, the beginning of the game is pretty pretty intensive for things you need out. You need to get those mobile units rolling really quickly to deal with barbarians and find those tribal villages. So it may be quite important to settle early. My take on it right now is I'm generally not moving more than one turn, maybe two turns if there's something really glorious to move towards. Mm -hmm. See, my approach is very simple. I just settle. Just settle. And that way I don't have to, I don't have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> just That way, no matter what, I, I'm turn one, I'm doing production, I'm doing culture, I'm doing food, you know, I'm getting all the things. Because you don't get any of those things, right? You don't get any science, you don't get any uh, culture until you settle. Yeah, you're right? talking about the palace yields. So, yep. Uh, yeah. You don't so, get any of the palace I mean, yields until you settle. That's I'll take true. those. I'll take those. Well, that I like it in place. It just, it just so happens that I, I, of the area here, I would definitely settle in place out of all these tiles. So, in Sweet. place. And so, uh, shall we, we, time, we, we reach in the time for our first one? First step no. cut, cut here? No, we Why got not? five minutes. Oh, Let's five minutes. It. Beautiful. Then we'll get this settled down. All right. All right. Is nice. It, what is, do we know uh, what the hockey is for Found City yet? It's B and C5. It's okay. B. It's yep. B? All right. So, yeah. I mean, how much of a cock tease would it be if we just you know, didn't even settle in the first episode of this campaign? Oh, that would be perfect. Just <laughs> we should do it. Along. Let's find 10 more things to talk about before <laughs> we start playing. <laughs>
All right, so um, normally I'm not a big fan of mountains. Mountains represent unworkable tiles that you can never get any utility out of. But with all the adjacency bonuses uh, for mountains for both the campus and the holy site, this is kind of nice right now. These being yeah, it's looks like if you uh, if you throw down the, the campus directly to your right there, wouldn't that give you already three from the mountains and one from the the district? So yeah, district I know, is campus one? Is it plus? Is it every mm -hmm. two adjacent districts or every one adjacent district? I know it's one off mountains. It's it's plus it's plus one every. Two for districts and one for every two. Yeah, so we get, we get three off the mountains there, and then uh, the oh, district will only give us a half. Plus, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we'd have to put so, another one, but yes, yes, exactly. That type of area is exactly what wait, we're looking for. Isn't there a reinforce there though? I would give another half point. Uh, I don't think it doesn't work that way, uh, to the best of my knowledge. If you have two halves and there are different different types of halves, like a district half and a reinforced half, I don't think it adds to the total. I think it has to oh. be. I'm not entirely sure if that's good looking at, but I I think I looked at it in the Ooh. past and that it was. Two halves don't equal one for some reason in that case. Literally unplayable. I, I, I mean, may be wrong. Just... So uh, I'm sure like I'll, I'm sure chat will tell us at some point or right. YouTube comments will tell us. But... I think it's funny how Filthy keeps referencing chat because uh, he's so Streams. used to streaming. He's, yeah. he's a big streamer if you guys aren't familiar. By the way, you stream like what, six, seven hours a day? So if you guys want to watch him play Civ Five and murder everyone, um, you, you can find him. Five days a week right now, uh, yeah, about about seven seven hours on those days, roughly. Which is so. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't disapprove. It's just, I just think it's kind of crazy. But hey, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for me, at the moment, I am this this interface system. It took me a while to find, but I really like it. Uh, this lets you determine where the extra citizens are going to grow to when your city grows. There's three options. It's prioritize this, ignore this, and don't do anything related to this. So just uh, default settings. And at the moment, I am telling all of my cities to prioritize food and growth. Food so and production. If you that's interesting. I've always, I've only done prioritize one or the other. If you do both, which one takes priority? Like if it has to choose between food or, or growth or, no, or don't actually hammers. Know yet. That's worth looking at. At the moment, I, it is going to prioritize tiles that have both to, I think, the larger degree. So I think it will take a two-two tile over a three-zero tile because I think it just well, that, sees four of that yield compared to three of that yield, and I've told it that both yields are important. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I have to say, I do feel like Civ Six at least from my perspective, is a very, very approachable game. And I feel like a lot of companies are going in this direction lately where they're trying to make their big ticket titles more approachable. They're trying to broaden their audience. And if you look at like how Civ Five was, especially at release, and you compare it to how Civ Six is going to be at release, they're just trying to expand that audience. Um, and that's not even getting into the whole graphical changes and all that stuff, but that's a whole new can of worms. So. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard um, I've heard some people in my chat again talking about this that it seems like it's so complicated. I actually actually have found this game from just a learning perspective, like diving into Civ Five versus Civ Six, less complicated to to grasp like basic concepts of. So I, I think I think I, I support that thought of yours. That I right. There's there's one other thing about Civ Six already that I I think is much more logical, which is that. Uh, Normally in Civ Five, if you expand, then your science costs and your policy costs go up, but that's not the case in Civ Six. And I never really understood why expanding was a negative. Like you're expanding to get more things. Like why would you lose stuff? And it's just it's just very different. Yeah, I, I think that is one of the biggest game balance changes that they've decided to make. And I don't yet know if I like it or not. I I, I think from a, a logic perspective, it makes sense that yeah, if I have more people doing more things, I should get more of this yield, and that's and that that would be a positive. But from a balance perspective, if you think about it this way, the way the growth works in Civ, it's not the difference between going from population one to population two is less than the difference in terms of the amount of food it requires than going from two to three. So every time you get bigger in population, it takes more food to grow to the next population point, which means that sure. if you look at optimal growth, how do you grow the most amount of populations? You have lots and lots of cities because then they grow to get to 10 pop for your total empire, you need three cities at three pop and one city at one pop or something like that, as opposed to mm -hmm. just your main city going 10. It takes less overall food to grow and you can do that quickly, which means that in general, expansions are really strong. And if you're looking at, if you have other things that are related to things like population, like production from tiles worked or science from, you know, whatever, you got to be careful with a very, with allowing endless endless settling being more of those things because that becomes the best strategy to do. So I think in Civ Five it was a balance related thing. Because expansions are so strong, there needs to be ways to kind of keep that in check from a balance perspective. And they don't have that here. So is that good or bad yet? I don't know. But uh, it is. it argues very strongly for wide play in Civilization Six if you can do it. Right. And I, for me, that's probably why I like it so much because I always liked to play wide. I never enjoyed going tall. It just felt weak. Like, I had a hard time playing Venice in Civ Five because it's like, okay, you get the one city, and then you get some city-state-related stuff. And it's like, 
I'd rather have 20 cities. I don't know. I just, I like playing wide. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, okay. this is a good game for you then. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so far. It's, it's, uh, it's agreed with me. So, well, uh, we're going to have to take a break here, uh, but we will be back, uh, same time, same place tomorrow. And, uh, you know, as always, you can check in the description down below. You can find links to uh, Filthy Robots channel, my channel, um, if you're watching his video or his perspective. And if, if you watch my perspective, maybe go check out his videos. If you watch his perspective, come check, check out some of my stuff. Whatever you want to do, it's fine. But uh, we'll be back later. See you soon.